So in total, we did eight rounds of IVF. I'm happy to say that I've now had it removed, which was a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> but we did seven rounds of surrogacy. Well, it's 2020 now and we met in 2012. Uh, we both live in London, we're both Londoners and it was the London Olympics. And it was an amazing time of year, it was such an exciting time for our city and um, we went to a house party. I was at a house party upstairs in a block of flats and there was a house party going on downstairs and we decided, my party decided to go downstairs to to see the, for the other party downstairs. The cooler party. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, when I walked into the party, I just walked straight in and I looked right and I saw Rob. And the moment I saw him, I knew he was the man for me. And that was that. <laughs> and I made it happen. <laughs> yeah. And so that was eight years ago. That was, that was eight years ago. It's actually your anniversary today. So it's eight years ago today. Today, all oh, right, yes, yeah. it is. Uh, well, we got married in 2014. Yeah. And it was probably. It was straight after. The decision well, to get married means meant to us the decision to have yeah, children. Yeah. We. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you see the real life having children. Anyway, they'll calm down, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I think once we sort of. Once our relationship became more of a serious relationship, we started talking about children then. But we knew we wanted to get married first and then have children. So. Yeah, it was something we wanted. And when we got married, we started trying straight away. So that was six years ago. Yes. Six years, six long years. And we... What haven't we tried? Yeah, what haven't we tried? I had, unfortunately, uh, an ectopic. I got pregnant on our honeymoon. And at eight weeks, it was a mis they said it was a miscarriage. But then at nine weeks, I was rushed to hospital and I nearly died because uh, I had an ectopic preg pregnancy. So I had to have um, that removed at nine weeks, which was traumatic. And then we decided to try IVF because obviously the chances of getting pregnant with only one fallopian tube is less. So um, we did our first round of IVF and it didn't work. And then our second round, I had another ectopic pregnancy so I had to have the other fallopian tube removed and by then there was just no chance to have children naturally, it was only IVF. So in total, we did eight rounds of IVF and then I, mean, I had, I've had about five or six operations on my uterus. Basically, that's the problem. I have a problem with my uterus um, and I'm happy to say that I've now had it removed, <laughs> which was a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> but we did seven rounds of surrogacy. Everything was, was tough, everything was difficult, it was a very sad time. Um, Celia had to have lots of hormones yeah, and injections. Yeah, the hormones, as anyone who's watching this who's done IVF know, make you crazy and exhausted. And You've got to have, get time off work, and yeah. that's frustrating, you've got to travel places. Yeah, um, but for us, I mean, the hardest thing was we, we lost twins, um, so we had lots of miscarriages. But we lost twins um, quite late in the pregnancy, twin boys, and um, yeah, our sons Spike and Nico were born, um, and um, Spike lived four hours and Nico lived for four days. So that was two years ago, and that was the hardest thing imaginable, I think. Um, so it's been quite a uniquely um, difficult journey for us. Yeah, for so tough, many reasons. Toughest thing we've ever done. Yeah, but they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and I think. We've, we've definitely oh, become stronger. Yeah, yeah. I'm laughing because we're saying that and now we've been, this, our babies are three weeks old today and we're suddenly like, wait, what doesn't kill you make you stronger? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that this gets easier then. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, we love them though, of course. Well, we, we f did we find out before Christmas? Before Christmas 2019? Oh, I thought it was... Um yeah, uh, yes, I think so. Yes, yeah, so obviously we'd, we've done, we've had, I mean, eight rounds of IVF, seven rounds of surrogacy. You become very jaded. 
and it's difficult to think, oh, well, this will work out. There are people who get pregnant and they do their pregnancy tests and they say, we're going to have a baby. But when we get positive tests, we're like, OK, let's just take it day by day. So, but getting the news was just amazing. Well, yeah, for me, I, we've received so many negatives. And I said to Celia, don't call me at work if it's bad news. Um, you know, I just can't handle that. And, but I was just typing away at my desk doing <laughs> some work. And uh, Celia's on the phone. So I rushed to a meeting room and she's just like, it's good news, it's good news. And it was good news. Um, the HCG levels yeah, quite so high. Yeah, so the hormone levels of the surrogate were really high, which was a very positive sign. Um, and I, we, I thought, God, could it be triplets? <laughs> we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> and then we found out not long after that it was twins. And I mean, it felt like the universe has wanted us to have twins because truthfully, this is our third set of twins. We also had identical twins that we lost at eight and 13 weeks gestation. So, yeah, um, yeah. it's obviously it's, meant for us. Yes. And um, yeah, was the best news ever. And then th this pregnancy yeah. was the easiest pregnancy ever. Uh, well, I mean, yes. obviously for us, but for our surrogate as well, she was healthy all the time and the babies did really well in all the scans. And every scan that came along, we were just terrified that it was going to be bad news after all the, yes. the terrible stuff that we'd gone through. But, um, but it was, it was always okay and like okay. just and even the birth uh, our surrogate went into labor at six something a.m and the babies were born three hours later three hours later vaginally it wasn't even like she had to have cesarean. a cesarean which we were really pleased for her so yeah it was yeah, so, amazing so the, the pregnancy went very well but yeah. our nerves went yeah terribly. it was emotion it was like it's lots of meditation basically <laughs> to try and stay sane because it's full on Amazing. We emailed the clinic, um, I think at about 18, or was it about 20 weeks? No, it wasn't. It was at 24 weeks because that's the, the stage in our pregnancy that our twin sons were born. And we just wouldn't allow ourselves to believe it was going to happen until that point. So at 24 weeks, we, when everything was good, in that, that scan, we emailed the clinic and that, with a message for our surrogate. And then we started, the surrogate and our, us started messaging one another yes. on Viber and... And it was quite uh, funny that she would translate into English for us <laughs> and we'd go on to Google U Translate and... Ukrainian for and her. Translate into Ukrainian and for some her. things are lost in translation, but um, yeah. It worked uh, and it was nice. And, and, and the we surrogate was, you know, what she was saying, it was amazing. So reassuring and she was so calm. It was her second time doing the program. She talked of all the, the good food she's eating. And she really took care of herself. She was just... Just, I mean, we couldn't have been lucky. She was an amazing surrogate, and now we consider her a friend, really. Mm. And we're, you know, mm. happy to f for our kids to have her in their lives forever, and for us to have her in our lives. And we, we said that when the children are 16 or 18, we'll come back to the Ukraine so we can spend time with her, and the kids can get to know her. And that's an important part of their journey. So yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it was, the communication was, it was, we didn't allow ourselves to communicate up until, as I said, that point. But then when we did, it was just wonderful. And she was just so reassuring all the time. And yeah, we just love her to pieces. Yeah, and, we, and we've since met her afterwards. Yeah. And that was lovely. And oh, it's really emotional. I yeah. just cried the whole <laughs> time. <laughs> you dream of your whole life, really. Like, I always wanted to be a mum. I've always wanted to have children. But obviously after our harrowing journey, just, you don't, I think you, for us, we didn't start, we didn't death go there emotionally because it was too, it was too frightening if it didn't work out. You just can't get your hopes up. But then um, when we got further through the, par the, the, the pregnancy, this pregnancy, we started to think, oh my gosh, this could happen. And yeah, we kept on talking about it. Imagine the day and we'd seen other videos of couples being given their children outside the maternity hospital and like cried watching those. So it was amazing. I thought I would just cry my eyes out and I think I thought I would just fall over. I wouldn't be able to stand up because mm. it would be so emotional. But I was really emotional and I cried, obviously. But when they're put in your arms, like for, for me, you have to say how you feel. But for me, yeah. I just I just was they looked like their skin was so perfect, like little furry peaches. And I just thought. They're so perfect. And I just fell in love immediately. And then, like, I just felt happy and I couldn't cry anymore. I was just like, it just, but it did feel bizarre and surreal. And I think it's only now starting to feel real. Mm -hmm. 
we, we had a lot of support. A lot of people don't share their journey with their family and friends and that's a personal choice, that's fine, but we were very open about everything that we'd been through and we, um, you know, as we got further through this pregnancy and told more people because we didn't share it initially because we'd had so many setbacks and it was too painful to kind of go through that with other people, then, um, yeah, we, it felt like we had this army of cheerleaders towards the end who were like, come on, come on. Let's, and so on the day that we found out our babies were born, you know, the, it's like London had a party. Everyone we knew just like yeah, was, was yeah. so happy and yeah, yeah. they're so excited for us to come home so that they can meet the babies. Yeah. You, know? you totally felt that everyone was rooting for us. Oh, completely. So I felt relieved for them. Yeah, and these are my, grand, my, my parents, their only grandchildren. So um, Rob, I mean, not that it makes a difference. Rob's, Rob's parents have grandchildren, but they're just as excited, obviously. But I mean, I feel like it's just, it's, it's such an exciting time for my parents to experience their first grandchildren as well. So yeah, we can't wait to get them back to London and, and, uh, and make someone else hold them mm. for a little bit. <laughs> I mean, we just feel, I, there were times during this, this journey, obviously seven attempts, and I remember we had conversations where we said, they're gonna, they're gonna, te they're gonna call us and they're gonna say, hey, you know, we can't, it's not gonna work for you, forget it, it's not gonna happen. And there were often times, and I remember we emailed a couple of times and said, are you, are you, gonna, are you gonna keep going? And they were like, yeah, of course, of course we're gonna keep going. So that was great. Yeah, and obviously we went through some very difficult times at the clinic and we had a lot of support and compassion and kindness, which was, yeah, which was lovely. I mean, obviously it's difficult because it's a very busy clinic and there are a lot of couples trying to have children. So sometimes the communication is not, is not quick and you don't get the response straight away because you're emotionally feeling it and you want to know straight away what's happening what's happening but i think towards the end of the pregnancy we were getting like mo responses the next minute and you know now that the babies are born we we get such a lot of support from the clinic yeah. and they've been fantastic and as well with the paperwork i was extremely anxious that we were going to spend ages waiting to get the paperwork but they've been so efficient and actually the uk passport office knows that they're really they their biotechscom is really renowned in the uk in the passport office for really efficient uh, efficiency with the paperwork so yes. what do yeah. you what do you what do you have any think say what are your impressions uh, yeah yeah really good impressions um the, the taxis are always there the accommodations are always very we, nice our apartment's lovely the staff who work S are really lovely the sporting staff are great uh, every, everything is catered for really isn't it yeah it really um, is food you know, <laughs> yeah things you 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 expect to get yourself but yeah um, I mean now that the twins are born we can take them every day if we want to the doctor who's just the next block along and um, our doctor she checks their weight and checks their health and that's been a huge peace of mind and I don't think that's something that we that that's not what we would get in the UK at all no. so that's hugely you know helpful um, what's difficult is the language barrier yes that's tough <laughs> It's totally different to English. With the alphabet not even being in... I've learned the alphabet, so I can read some stuff. Um, but it's tiring because, you know, you, you want to talk to people and we're on your Google, Google Translate a lot. So that's really difficult. And I think the food has been difficult. Obviously, anywhere you come, you miss your home cooking. and We miss, we miss our, our home food and, yeah. yeah. But, but Kiev, Kiev is awesome. Is it's fantastic. We think it's a little version of London. Not yeah, a little it's very, version, it's a, a different cool. Version. It's got a bit of I think greenery. it's a bit like New York as well, in many ways, like the kind of look, the buildings yeah. and stuff, and you can see anyway. That's we, just my opinion. As we've tried seven times, we've we've, we've done the tour we've done the tourist stuff. Uh, we and we've enjoyed Mother that. Motherland yeah. and the the, the tombs yeah the lavra yeah yeah we've done so we've done a lot of the touristy things and we've then and there's some fantastic restaurants in in kiev like we've eaten oh, yeah, <laughs> we've really eaten nice. a lot just a final thank you biotech yeah thank you i mean words can't really express how grateful we are and to our surrogate you know yes it's she's amazing like no cards no gifts nothing we'll really be able to express and I, I think we still can't really understand the magnitude of what's happened and we're just so happy and they're so, per I mean, obviously we think they are, but they're yeah. so perfect and they're so adorable and they're such good babies. What a story we have to tell them. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's another thing. We're, we plan to be very open with them about everything that we've gone through. And um, Oh, shh, shh. Yeah, we're going to have to go. Because I think it's important for our, from our point of view, not for everyone, but, you know, that they... But this is, an, this is a big journey that we went through and, you know, when they're teenagers, they can't say, you never wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did. And we'll show you the bank balance to prove it. <laughs> OK, I think that's all, all right. we have to say. Yep. High five. <laughs> <laughs>